It's the 70th year of the Cactus League, and the Giants are one of the originals training in the Valley of the Sun for almost every spring since 1947. From the New York Giants to San Francisco, great players prepare for the regular season with all the hope and optimism that springtime brings. It's Giants baseball from the desert, and it's next. It'll be a sellout crowd here tonight at Scottsdale Stadium. It's exhibition baseball. It's the Dodgers against the Giants. Hi again, everybody. I'm Dwayne Kuyper. Alongside me is Mike Kruko, and welcome to Giants baseball. Well, it is exhibition baseball. The game doesn't count, but there are still some things at stake, and one of the spots that's open is the fifth starter spot. And, uh, and Matt Cain is in competition. It's an unusual spot for him, and he starts tonight. Well, when you think about Matt Cain, you don't think of him as a fifth starter, and you don't think of him having to compete for that spot in the rotation. But that's exactly what's happened here. Giants need to see a good spring out of Matt Cain. His first outing, he went 40 pitches, more than anybody in their first outing. Tonight, he is going to look to extend upon that and keep building that arm strength, and he's going to do it against a, a Dodger team. Giants, Dodgers both come into this game with three wins apiece, and it's always a little something extra. So watch. Matt Cain tonight. That's the story. Even though it doesn't count, it's still time for us to have some fun in the desert, and our Giants fans are certainly going to do that. All right, stay with us. Lineups on the very first pitch of this game right after this. Giants baseball on CSN Bay Area is brought to you by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. Back here in the desert at Scottsdale Stadium, the Giants have taken the field, led out by Matt Kane. And the lineup that Matt Kane will be facing, you'll notice some that you might recognize. It'll be Utley, Yasmani, Grandal, 
Well, he had 27 big flies last year, followed by Peterson, Puig, and Kike Hernandez. Bellinger. Bellinger is in the lineup. He'll hit six, and it's Wilson, Culberson, and Henry Ramos will hit ninth. On the hill tonight for the Giants, making his second start down here in the Cactus League will be the veteran right-hander, Matt Kane, 6'3", 230-pounder. Kane, 32 years of age. And uh, you take a look at what he did in last year's season and 21 appearances, 17 of which were starts, 4-8 and eight with a 5-6-4 ERA. And for Kane, this is a big spring. He's got to let Bruce Bochy and Dave Rigetti know that he's ready to assume the responsibility of being in that Giants rotation. So for him, every start down here is huge. And we mentioned earlier in the broadcast that Kane in his first outing had 40 pitches, the most any pitcher had in their first appearance tonight. He'll look to add to that, but a lot of stake for Matt Kane. Defensively, the Giants are going to set it up this way, starting in their outfield from left to right. It'll be Parker, Span, and Pence. Good arms on the corners. Beckham and Hill will be on the left side of the infield. Tomlinson and Bell will be on the right side, and Tim Fedorovich, he'll be in the squad putting down the sides. Buster Posey, a late scratch, a little bit of a stiff neck. So he will watch this one along with about 65 other players. <laughs> At least. 47 coaches and a manager as Utley takes a pitch high. So this game gets started here at Scottsdale Stadium on a very, very nice Wednesday evening. 6.06, first pitch. Kane to Utley. And Utley dribbles it foul. Fedorovich taking Buster Posey's spot. 69 degrees. And by the time this game ends, it'll be closer to 49 degrees. Yeah, cold winds are coming here. But Although we, the weather's supposed to be pretty good the rest of the weekend. But we came prepared. He takes down low. Well, we learned that from Candlestick. If you get cold, it's your fault. <laughs> That's right. That's right. On deck is Grandal and then Peterson. Sweet. That's two and two. Dodgers last year, 91 and 71. They, of course, won the West again. Giants are four games back of the Dodgers, 87 and 75. And to get to that record, the Giants had to sweep them in the last three games of the season, and they did. And they had to win every one of those games to get to the wild card spot. Not a great second half, to say the least, but a great finish. To get to play the Mets. Here's the 3 2 pitch to Utley. And Utley bounces this one to Belt. And Belt on the backhand. And that's how this game gets started. This is, you know, I always feel for veteran guys, Mike, that have to pitch well in the desert to get a spot like Kane is in the rotation because it's just really odd baseball in the desert. Well, you don't get a big snap on your slider or your curveball. I mean, you really have to rely on your fastball, its location, and changeup. Here's Grandall who takes a strike. And it doesn't help if you've got an umpire like Jim Reynolds who doesn't have big corners. And you got a hard infield, and you, a lot of times you got wind and a big ballpark. You had a good breaking ball. I think you're going to look to see Matt Kane use that breaking ball a little bit more. Remember, that was the, that was the specialty pitch that he showed up at the big leagues with when he was 20 years old. Hit on the ground and it finds a hole between Belt and Tomlinson. The curveball, his first specialty pitch, and that was his strikeout pitch back when he first got into the big leagues. And since that time, he's added a changeup, cutter, two types of fastball. I mean, basically, he's learned how to pitch. Broke into the big leagues in 2005. Way back when. Now, crusty veteran. Here's the local kid, Jack Peterson. Peterson, his rookie year, really had a great first half and then did a lot of swinging and missing. And he seemed to correct that last year. And you can see his 25 home runs. He's got power. And he's. Fabulous defensive player in center field. 
Still looks like he's 14 years old. He does. If you have a beard growing contest, he's not going to win it. Yasiel Puig is on deck. 2 0 with Grandal at first base, just underway. And it's 3 0. So Kane out of the stretch for the first time, trying to throw a strike. A lot of green lights here on 3 0 counts in spring training. Jack Peterson's going to sit on a fastball. He'll look middle in and he's going to try and hit one in the street. Swinging and fouling towards the hospital. And it's three and one. He is not afraid to throw the bat head. And perhaps that's the one thing that we didn't see a whole lot of his rookie year. Two strike adjustments. He just flailed. Last year, he did take a little swing out, had better results. Look like a BP fastball, the speed between a changeup and a fastball. Hey, whatever it is, it worked. Peterson's a natural low ball hitter. He's got a little lift in his swing. Most home run, home run hitters do. And you know he wants to see that pitch again. On the ground to Bell. Could be a pair. And it is. Nice inning for Matt Cain. He gets the ground ball double play to end the inning. Giants are coming up. Span to lead it off. When you go out. For take the field led out by Scott Kazmir and the lineup that he'll be facing and it'll be Denard Span in the leadoff spot followed by Nunez the DH then Pence and Brandon Belt see Belt's numbers last year but here Aaron Hill then Parker followed by Beckham Tomlinson and then hitting ninth is Tim Fedorovich on the Hilton night for the Dodgers will be the veteran left-hander Scott Kazmir Take a look at the season last year. 26 starts, 10 and 6 with a 4.56 ERA. Battled some injuries, still averaged almost a strikeout in inning. Got good stuff. You see a low 90s fastball. He will sink and cut it. Got a curveball, slider, changeup combination. You see more breaking balls than changeups, but he will throw anything at you at any time. Casimir in his 11th year at the big league level. Not a big guy, six feet tall, just under 200 pounds. So Denard Spann trying to make points with Jim Reynolds. We'll see if it works. Oh, he's a good hitter's umpire. And the first pitch from Casimir is a strike. Remember, this is game six. As Mike mentioned in the open, both teams are three and two. This is slowly hit to Utley, and Utley will make the play. Take a look at the Dodgers defensively, starting in their outfield from left to right. It'll be Ramos, Peterson, and Puig, best arm in right field, is one of the best in baseball. Hernandez and Culberson on the left side, Utley Bellinger on the right side, Bobby Wilson. He'll be in the squad, putting down the signs. 
Here's Eduardo Nunez who has a shoulder issue. So he's the designated hitter. And on the spring, Nunez with only four at bats and he's 0 for 4. Giants missed him in postseason last year. But with him being out, it did make a hero out of Connor Gillespie. Well, indeed it did. But Nunez certainly was missed. And one thing about Nunez, he is a, a legitimate five tool guy. Slowly hit to Bellinger. And Bellinger is going to flip to Casimir. We should mention that Nunez, when we say was missed, he was missed as a starter. He, he did get into a couple of games as a pinch hitter. So here's Hunter Pence. Clean shaven. Looks like the guy that arrived in 2012 before the trading deadline. And then in between then and maybe his last at bat last year, his appearance changed a bit. I mean, it's amazing when he cuts his hair. He shaves his beard. He looks like he's a teenager. Now, I don't know what it's like when he takes his helmet off. There might be 12 pounds of hair underneath that helmet. And he dribbles it foul. I don't think so. But, you know, he, he's one of those guys that you make sure you check in with every day because he is 100% pure energy and it never changes. This guy has never had a bad day in his life. It just doesn't, doesn't happen to him. Watched his batting practice. We were behind the cage. We were talking to Buster. I said, you know what's really great? It's nice to see that Hunter Pence has taken a little bit out of his swing. Yeah, right. <laughs> he takes a swing like he's defending the crown. And a strike. It's one and two. Hunter Pence in his 10th year at the big league level. Yeah. He'll turn 34 April 13th. And a newlywed. There's a few newlyweds on this team. As this is wrapped towards the hole, but cut off by the former giant, Charlie Culberson, and that's going to end the inning. Yasiel Puig's going to hit first when we come back. It's nothing, nothing. No score. Top of the second. Yasuo Pui greeted very warmly by our folks here at Scottsdale Stadium. As uh, Matt Kane about to start inning number two, we do have Giants manager Bruce Bochy hooked up downstairs. And uh, Skipper, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. It's great to see you guys. Uh, came in today, and you and uh, Krug were standing by the cage. Uh, that's always a good sign. So it's great to catch up. Well, it was great to see you too. You know, the thing that is kind of remarkable 
about how fast this is going. This is your 11th year as a Giants manager. Do you believe that? Yeah, no, it's flown by. But I guess that, you know, that's a good thing, you know, because if you're having a great time, time flies by. So uh, it's hard, hard for me uh, to. I uh, believe it's it's been 11 years already and uh, but you know what I, I, I made that drive out here from uh, home and I've been making that drive for over 30 something years here to Arizona and uh, same feeling I couldn't wait to get here and see these guys and uh, you know and just uh, start getting ready for the season of course play you know, start playing games and we have some tough calls here this spring but uh, great group here we have well I mean the op the object in the offseason is to Obviously, enjoy yourself, relax, charge your batteries. Is there a point where you start thinking about coming here? Is it December? Is it after the Super Bowl? When is it? Well, I, I think for me, it's really in, in, in January. Uh, although you have the winter meetings in December, and you're talking about the club, your club, you're having meetings uh, with all your scouts. It's just, you know, it, it's always going through your head, but. Uh, January picks up, but really, you know, when the Super Bowl ends, it's like, okay, we're on. It's our game now, and uh, so that's really when I probably get locked in. And uh, but you know, throughout the uh, winter, I'm thinking of things I might want to say to the club, or uh, things that I want to cover, or things I want to change uh, as far as fundamentals. So you know, that's ongoing. Well, Pu Puig strikes out. Here's Kike Hernandez. Skipper, a couple of new additions to your coaching staff. Jose Aguasil, the first base coaching box, and uh, a protege of yours, a guy you had a lot to do in, in teaching them the game at the big league level. Phil Nevin will be the third base coach. Tell us about how they impact the club. Yeah, Krug, I, I'm really excited to have both of them uh, on the bases here. And, you know, Augie's a taskmaster. He's come up through our system. Uh, uh, I know. A lot about him. He's been in big league camp. I think the last four or five years with us. Uh, we brought him up in uh, September. He's helped out, and you know he's a uh, guy that's going to be helping with the outfield. Uh, he'll help running with uh, with the infield. He managed in Sacramento, and so you know he's he's good and really in all phases of the game and uh, all facets. And, and the same with Nevin. Now, when I had Phil Nevin, he was one of those guys that was always you know asking me questions. Uh, you know, he pays attention to detail and. You know, during the course of a game, uh, you know, it might have been after the game or even during the game if he wasn't playing, he'd ask me about it. And so he went down to manage. Uh, he started in independent ball, and if you can manage there, I mean, you're everything there. You're the GM, manager, and uh, so you have to learn everything about the game. And uh, so man, when uh, Arizona didn't hire him, uh, yeah, I knew I would, I would uh, bring him here as my third base coach. All right, about what's going on on the field. Uh, you're keeping a close eye, I'm sure, on Matt Cain. And, and uh, look, we're all fans of Matt Cain, so I think we all want him to do well. And so I'm sure you do too. We do. And, uh, you know, Matt's looked good so far. Uh, you know, first couple uh, bullpens I saw this spring, uh, you know, I, I loved his uh, uh, delivery. It's free, free and easy. I mean, he's commanding the ball well. But made a nice block there too uh, on that throwback. <laughs> but uh, you know he's. I just think he's going to be a, you know a different pitcher. He's further away from the surgery. He's gotten used uh, to this arm, and and we're hoping when uh, you, know, you have a guy like this that's done so much for you, you, you pull for those guys. And, you know we have some good choices, but uh, you know Maddie is a guy that you know if he gets back on track like we think, he, he's a difference maker. This is. Bobby Wilson the Dodger catcher with the count of no balls and two strikes Matt King trying to get out of the inning with a man at first and two outs and we're with Bruce Bochy. I think too Bobby Evans gave you a lot of veterans uh, that you have options to sort of build your bench with which is always nice to have when you have an experienced bat coming late into a game. Right right and uh, you see two of them out here. Uh, uh, we need to cut that ball off. I mean, it looks like Span is going to do that. Oh, hey. um, yeah, we have two of them here tonight. Aaron Hill at third base and back on the shortstop. Uh, Jimmy Rollins. Uh, you know, Morris is here. Ruggiano. Uh, you know, we're we're going to have some tough calls. We we have a lot of guys that uh, have the experience uh, to be good bench players, and so it's going to be very competitive this spring. And my challenge right now is to get them out there as much as I can. So. You know, we can make the right call hopefully and uh, 
and not to rule out the guys that we have. We know Tommy did a good job for us last year, and uh, so uh, I I look forward to uh, the spring and uh, and watching these guys. Here's the former Giant Charlie Culberson. Runners at the corners, and that's in the dirt, blocked by Fedorovich. One ball and no strikes. And I, I guess with the World Baseball Classic, it's going to give some guys maybe an opportunity to get a few more at bats. No, it, it, it will. I mean, it's always tough to you know see a, a couple of your core guys go, but uh, I'm all for this. And uh, Crawford and, and Posey are leaving, uh, you know, soon. And I think on the fifth or sixth. So Buster was scheduled to get some at bats uh, today. And uh, we had to scratch him because of his neck, but um, uh, we'll have him ready. We'll have Crawford ready. Cueto, uh, uh, not real sure. Uh, we're hoping to get him here in a couple of days, uh, but we put him on a schedule there in the Dominican. And uh, he, in my last conversation, he said that you know he wasn't 100 uh, 100 percent that he would pitch, uh, especially in the first round. So uh, we'll have to hopefully get a look at him and make a call there on him, but. Meanwhile, you're right. It's going to force us to take a look at some of these guys and uh, see see what we have. Here's Henry Ramos. So after Kane retired the first two hitters, three straight singles, and that is going to clear the bases. Coming in to score is Wilson. Culberson is right behind him. Headed to third is Ramos, and he's going to make it. So after two outs, trouble for Matt Kane, and that'll bring up Chase Utley. Skipper, we're going to let you manage Kane out of this one. Thanks for stopping by. Guys, yeah, always good talking with you. Yeah, Matt, he's got to command a little better here. It's, it's getting away from him, and we know that happened last year a few times. I mean, he gets in a good groove and then gets out of sync a little bit, and uh, he starts finding the heart of the plate. And that's that's what's happening right now. All right, thanks again. All right, guys, thanks. You bet. Okay. So here's Utley. Well, right now, location is what is deceiving that game. And he's missed a lot of pitches out of the middle of the plate, right at the belt. And it's it's BP location. Dodgers are jumping on it. And that's the one pitch that has been effective. And that's that big curveball. Utley bounced out to belt to open up the ball game. And it's nothing but two. See the location on this pitch to Ramos. This is what Mike's talking about. And he's going to go up there looking for this location. He's going to look for something out over the plate. I mean, that is right there, T-ball at the belt. And he was not fooled at all. Outside to Utley. I did mention it. it, it you know, came through 40 pitches his first out. He came in here. He says, I, I, I want to extend out early, and they've done that with him. But you always wonder when you extend out early, especially on your first appearance, what your arm is going to react. How it's going to react? What time of strength? What time of velocity you're going to have in your, in your next outing? And tonight he doesn't have the same velocity that he had in his first outing. First time block. Well, you're not going to have your normal velocity. You have to make up for it with good location. And trying to find consistent good location early on in spring. Good luck with that. Thirty seven pitches. So here's pitch thirty eight. And it's bounced the belt. So Utley is going to put an end to this inning. But the Dodgers scored three times. Three nothing LA. Everything we stopped.
to go to opening day, you can guarantee yourself a ticket to opening day by selecting our opening day four pack. The pack features an opening day, Dodgers, Indians, and a Cubs ticket, all for one low price. Do not miss opening day. Go to sfgiants.com slash mini pack for more pack information on how to purchase. First promo of the year. Not sure if I nailed it. Uh, I think you did. Yeah, well. we'll see. Only thing missing, operators are standing by. Here's Belt. Belt falls on out of play. You think by now they let the operators get a chair, but no, standing by. Belt is two for seven this spring. 156 games last year. Fall back again. It's another and two. Belt, I'm sure, realizes that he is going to look at a shift for the rest of his life. Well, yeah, get used to it. I'm sure he has got. Well, I mean, he, he expects it. I don't know if he, I mean, he's ever going to like it. We're talking about an old timers game 30 years from now, and they're going to put a shift on him. Well, you know. Until he learns to go the other way, I mean, the, uh, that's what he's going to look at. And for some guys, it's like, I'm not even going to give in to that. Did you ever have to hit against a shift like that? Yeah, what well, was the opposite for me? In the dirt, no swing. I mean, I was a left handed hitter. They had three guys on the left side of the infield. <laughs> well. But it's really part of the game now. And, and by now we're used to it. Although sometimes we're not, we don't agree with the people that they shift on as belt strikes out swinging. Good breaking ball from Kasman. Mike. Talked about the new coaches. There's Jose and Nevin on the other side. Agasillo is a guy who it really is does and has done everything in the game. Phil Nevin, just a warhorse, a great player, and he's a guy that it, 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 there's accountability when you're hanging around Phil Nevin. If you make a mental mistake, I mean, you can expect to be confronted. Well, plus he can beat you up. Yeah, that, that holds weight too. Aaron Hill takes a ball. Two balls and no strikes. I always thought there were three things that really got your attention from a manager. Number one, if he was smarter than you, which was usually the case. Right. Number two, if he had more money than you, which was usually the case. And number three, if he could kick your butt. That or if he had a bodyguard like Nevin that could do it. Yeah. Not that you'd want to go toe to toe with Bochy no, anyway. No, no, no. Hill may have been hit on the foot. Manager of the year. Right there. And we like to refer to Dave Roberts as a former giant. Not so much a current Dodger, but a former Giant. Well, he did an outstanding job and was rightfully rewarded. I mean, there was a lot of injuries, plus the big horse. Clayton Kershaw went down for a good portion of last year, and yet Dave Roberts kept everybody in the right direction, wound up winning the National League West, and really one of baseball's really good guys. Well, he's not going to beat you up, but he could talk you out of a fight. Oh, no, he's sneaky. Great guy. Parker takes down low. Yeah, we found that out when he was with the Giants. I mean, he wasn't afraid to get into the pile in the middle of a Donnie Brook in the middle of the infield. Good guy. Parker two for six. Just because Roberts is five foot three, don't let that fool you. In the dirt, squirts away from Wilson. 
and Hill down to second base. By the way, they did rule that Hill was hit by a pitch. And in these games, in all honesty, we can make stuff up. Yeah, like Dave Roberts being five foot three. Not really, but. Well, if you'd have said six foot four, you know, then it really would have been an exaggeration. The 2 1 coming up to Parker. And Parker fouls this one straight back and into the seats. It's 2 and 2. Yeah, this is another one of the guys who's really in a, a, a spot of competition with Mac Williamson for the left field job. And this is a significant night because Parker gets to start against a left hander, Scott Kazmir, who has good breaking balls. Normally, if this was in the regular season and they were going to platoon Williamson and Parker, this is not a start that he would get. So this is a big opportunity for him to show yeah. Bochi that he can hit lefties. Good lefties. And a pop up down the left field line and out of play. Parker's home run this spring came against the lefty. Last year, 63 games, hit 236, but the on base percentage is good. 358. Mm -hmm. Lots of power. And we're talking from foul line to foul line. And the pitch. Driven down the right field line. Fair ball off the bottom of the wall. And coming in to score will be Hill. And Parker slides into second with a double. Giants on the board. That is a huge at bat for Jared Parker. And in his wheelhouse, right? Down and in. And they set it, the target away, and just a mistake from Casimir, as you right, he leaves it down and in, and that's the kind of a break a ball you're looking for. A hanger. And he hits a laser right to the base of the foul line. Foul pole. That's an at bat that everybody in that Giants dugout is going to remember. Here's Beckham. Another one of the veteran infielders that are in camp. A lot of veteran outfielders as well. Beckham really signed with the Giants late in September. Did not have a hit in that series against the Dodgers, but did drive in a run with a sacrifice fly. And you remember that series. Every run they scored in that three game series was important. And they needed to win every game. And the pitch is high. It's three and all. So now Casimir a bit out of whack. Give it into the fastball, 3 0 count. So Bobby Wilson being asked to come out. Casimir wants to talk to him a little bit. You think of Casimir, I mean, you think of a guy who has really exceptional command. I mean, that's how he lives. So right now, as you mentioned, a little out of whack, out of the stretch. So Rick Honeycutt's going to come out and talk. That, that's not how he is it? Yes, it is. Veteran pitching coach for the Dodgers, one of the best in the game. Well, huge news, Giants fans. For the first time, starting opening day on April 2nd, you can take the Giants with you. Stream games to your mobile phone, laptop, and tablet on CSNBayArea.com and the NBC Sports app, brought to you by your NorCal Honda dealers. All right, so you win the first promo read contest. Good job. I practiced probably what maybe 
Seven hundred and fifty more to go this year. And that's just the first month. <laughs> here's here's Kelby Tomlinson. Here's a guy that hit 292 last year. And it's not certain that he's going to make this team. And there's a strike. And all of his at bats in September seemed like they were terrific at bats. Good player. Do a lot of things for you. But I think the best thing he does for you is get in that batter's box and fight. One of the best two strike hitters in that Giants team. And he's got good speed. The thing about Tomlinson that it, it, it works against him is because he's got options left. And you have a lot of veterans. I mean, even if they, he doesn't make the team initially, if he does get set down, I'm not saying he is. He would play every day. The Giants love this guy. And there's lots to like about him. Sports away. And now finding it late was Wilson and both runners advance. Wilson really didn't realize it did not roll that far away from him, but it took him a long time to find it. Now, maybe Bobby Wilson got crossed up. I mean, that's all has got to get. That's got to be a pass ball. It is. It almost looked like he was expecting some other kind of movement on the pitch. Tap foul. So it's two and two. Now Casimir steps out. Giants on the board. It's 3 1 Dodgers. All runs in this game have been scored here in this second inning. All back. Stays at two and two. Right over the head of Fedorovich, who's kind of leaking out of the on deck circle. He's a catcher, though. You can't hurt catchers. Take a foul ball right to the forehead and laugh it off. That's a former Dodger you're looking at. FedEx. Infield back for the Dodgers. And Tomlinson fights off another pitch. Okay. Another good. Two strike battle from Kelly Thompson. You'll see him use the whole field too. Got a very good out inside out approach. Takes a lot of balls to right against righties and lefties. Casimir going deep in the pitch count now. This is where you make your strength games. You wake up tomorrow and you're going to be sore. These are stress pitches. Good take right there. Two two change up. Was that always hard for you as a hitter to the layoff off speed stuff early in the yeah, spring? Absolutely, especially change ups. It was hard for me to lay off a change up in August, <laughs> let alone game six in spring training. Payoff pitch on the ground to second. And Utley's going to throw off Tomlinson, and that knocks him around. Well, that's going to get Tomlinson a pat on the back. Nice two strike battle. Put the ball in play. The infield play back. Gets himself an RBI. The Giants come one run closer. But that's going to be it for Casimir. You can let guys have stress pitches, but you can't let them have too many early on. So Dave Roberts going to protect his lefty and go to the bullpen. Well, that's going to give us a chance to take a break. We're out of breath already. We're in the second inning. We'll be back.
Baseball on CSN Bay Area is brought to you by Lenardi's Market. For a location near you, visit lenardis.com or find us on Facebook. Lenardi's, quite simply the best. Giants have scored twice here in the second. In the top of the inning, the Dodgers scored three times. So here's Josh Raven. And he'll be facing Federovich. And if you like hard throwers, uh, you're going to like Josh Raven. Last year in 10 games, really opened some eyes. 13 strikeouts in 9 and 2 It's just two hits allowed. You're going to see a mid to high 90s fastball slider and a changeup. Guy originally was drafted by the Cincinnati Reds, fifth round back in 2006. Dodgers got him as a free agent, had been released. Here's Fedorovich with the tie and run it. At third, and there's a pitch high. One ball and no strikes. Beckham is at third. By the way, Fedorovich, four different years he was in a Dodger uniform at the big league level. And then last year he played. Let me see, I had it here. He played in 17 games for the Cubs, and he. Is going to get a World Series ring. Three and zero, span on deck. Well, the baseball gods have smiled upon Fedorovich, but you know, you could, I mean, even though he's in 17 games, you could never say that a catcher didn't earn it, because they do. The hard things. So a four pitch walk to Fedorovich. So Raven comes in and does not throw a strike. And here's Span. Span, like Hunter Pence, married in the offseason. Joe Panic married in the offseason. Derek Law married in the offseason. So far, Panic, and I told him this, you were standing there before the game, much better hitter married. <laughs> yeah, much more relaxed. Four for, yeah, he's four for eight. There's his numbers. Panic. Five for eight. <laughs> Span on the ground, foul. And it's one ball and one strike. Nunez on deck. Long second inning. Kane managed to finish the inning. Kazmir did not. And Raven to span, and there's a strike. It's one and two. Packed house. Comfortable and cool night. Not many night games during the spring. And Span is going to bloop one out to Utley, and that's going to end the inning. Giants score twice. They leave the tie and run at third after two, 3 2 LA.
Well, check out Tomboy coming March 10th. The special documentary attempts to elevate the conversation about gender in sports told through the voices of many of the world's most prominent female athletes, broadcasters, sports executives, writers. It is a fantastic show, and please check it out. March 10th, you'll see it right here on CSN Bay Area. Good job. 3-2. Dodgers. And here's Grandall facing Ty Block. And the first pitch is wide to Grandall, who singled in the first inning and then was wiped out on a double play. And a strike to Grandall. Ty Block on the ground to Beckham. How do you make a name for yourself when you're with the Giants? Well, you beat the Dodgers. And then how do you even do better than that? Well, you beat them when you have to, and the other pitcher is Clayton Kershaw. And he did that. You know, Ty Block is a great story. I mean, the last two seasons down at AAA Ball, I mean, he had outstanding years. You have a good year, and they send you back. It, it's tough to swallow, it. and he did. Last year, he won 14 games after winning 11 in 2015. Went 14 and seven for the River Cats in Sacramento. Then he gets the call up, and he was significant in contributions, not just out of the bullpen, but as a starter. But you point out the one matchup he had with Clayton Kershaw took him down on a Saturday. Last three games of the year. Just a remarkable story. And he is on the map. I mean, here's a guy who the Giants really are looking for a spot to put him, either in the rotation or in the pin. Very athletic. Feels his position well. He hits him. He does all the things that you would expect a guy that did not miss a level in the minor leagues have the ability to do. Holds runners on, controls the tempo of the game. Got him. And the game we're talking about was October 1st. And the Giants needed this. And they got it from Ty Block. And he just kept mowing them down. Fastball, low 90s, change up. Little cutter, slider. He moves the ball around. Great command on both sides of the plate. 6'2", 200 pounder. Black, 26 years of age, as he mentioned, just the one month of the big league level. But that was that win that he had. Three hits, shutout, for eight innings. Was the winning pitcher that day. And you talk about having an outing where you feel like you belong at the big league level. I mean, you take down a Cy Young Award winner in the middle of a of a race to get to the playoffs. You have to feel like you belong. Blockage thought he had a strike. It's two balls and no strikes. Big chopper. Beckham's going to have to hurry. And Bell cannot grab it as it bounces up against the dugout. He also hit the ball, Mike. I mean, this is Clayton Kershaw. <laughs> He's not, there's no tougher at bat in the National League. And it, that wasn't the last hit that he had. I mean, it was a two hit day. Again, uh, Kershaw, other way. A day he'll never forget. Somewhere in that facial expression was a celebration. Foul down the right field line and out of play by Kike Hernandez. So no, he sets the bar pretty high, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. I want him to do that every time out. Puig. 
when we first saw Yasiel Pui, he'd have been long gone by now. As far as trying to steal a bag. That foul, it's one and two. Looks a little thinner. So do you, by the way. No. No? Bigger clothes, baggier clothes, wearing black. Right, you're working for the right team, but we. Yeah. Unless they ask us to put that orange shirt on, then we got a problem. <laughs> There's no way. Belt holding on Puig. Outside to Hernandez. Soft stuff away, sets up hard stuff in. I just know that Kike Hernandez can hit a fastball. And he has done that repeatedly against Madison Bumgarner, one of the few in all of baseball that has had the kind of success against him. Slowly hit to Tomlinson, and this will end the inning. So block pitches through the air. Giants are coming up. Nunez, the hit for. Giants baseball on CSN Bay Area is brought to you by the Bay Area Chevy dealers. It's a 3-2 ball game. All the runs in this game scored in the second inning. And Josh Raven will go out to work against Eduardo Nunez. Then Hunter Pence. And then Brandon Belt. Is Gordon Beckham next to Ron Wotus and the pitch to Nunez is a curveball for a strike. Nunez in his first at bat bounced one to the first baseman Bellinger. Go up there hitting off a of Raven. You're not, you're not gonna look for a breaking ball first pitch. That throws mid to high 90s, occasionally a hundred. You're not gonna look breaking ball. That's good. Remember uh, a couple of years ago, the Giants had a pitcher by the name of Mike Broadway. Yeah, he reminds me of Mike Broadway. A lot of years in the minor leagues, throws hard, and that may have hit the bat. It did. It's a strike. It's one and two. That's a rough strike. Yeah, it did. It just you could hear it. Yeah, a little late Nunez was with shaking the hand like it hit his hand. Not right, ready? Oh, too late. Yeah, you got to get up and you got to start doing handstands. I mean, it, 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 look, it might have hit his hand. So it's spring training, and you just get buzzed by 95 up around the head. 
I mean. Yeah, you look for a breaking ball here. Face hit. Or go the other way. <laughs> that, folks, is what a big league hitter is all about. Just take a little off, think the other way. He gets a pretty good pitch to do something with. That ball's right out over the middle of the plate, but he doesn't get greedy. Stay inside, throw it to right. Those are the kind of at bats that hitting instructors will pat you on the back for. I mean, any time, but especially spring training when you're trying to find a swing. Here's Pence. Hunter Pence grounded out to third. And that ended the first inning. We're in the bottom of the third inning. Glad you joined us. As Nunez falls down, and now he is going to be tagged out. And hopefully he didn't fall down because he tore something or pulled something, and it appears that he didn't. And that's out number one. Let's take a look at his lead and his explosives. Just a stumble, that's all. He'll have a new shoe contract tomorrow. Hey, early in spring, you got heavy feet. <laughs> well, he's going to take some. If he's healthy, he's going to take some abuse in the dugout. Here's Pence. Not yet. Yeah, you have to wait. No, you okay? Everything yet. all right? Not yet. You got to be able to read the room when you're in that dugout. Yeah, you can't get in a guy too early, especially a guy who had. An injury last year that cost him the last month and a half of the season. Absolutely. And you got to make sure that he's okay, too. Pence with a big swing and a miss, one and two. Not yet. Belt to follow. Raven to Bobby Wilson, and it's outside for a ball, two and two. Good pitch, Raven wanted it. He walked off the mound. That's the kind of breaking ball you want to throw, one, two count. Just a wee bit outside. Ball back. Two and two to Hunter Pence's brother. I mean, he really does look like Hunter Pence's little brother. Shave off the beard, cut the hair. Oh, took the helmet off. Now we got the look. Right on cue. Down low, three and two. Casimir started. Raven came in with two outs in the second inning. Issued a walk and got a pop up. Pence pops this one out of play down the right field line, and we will do it again. So Raven reaching back in the 3 2 count, going right after Pence with the fastball. Hunter Pence has always hit with a choke. I had a poster of Barry Bonds in my room when I was a kid. He had a choke. If it worked for him, I'm going to use it. And the walk. Here's Belt. Belt struck out in the second inning. Overshift on for Belt as usual. And a quick toss and punts or uh, Pence stumbles back. Aaron Hill to follow. Belt goes the other way, and that's a base hit. Hunter Pence says, I'm going to challenge Peterson, and he made it. 
a bit risky and certainly aggressive in belt. One of the base hit, putting runners at the corners. Jack Peterson's got a good arm. And accurate, too. And accurate, too, indeed. This was not that far away. But inside out, go the opposite gap. And Hunter Pence, I mean, this plays right in front of him. He didn't have to look over to the base coach at third base for an OK green light sign. This is his call. And the wide throw provided a little window of opportunity. And that's all it took for Pence to be safe. Easy on those ankles, Hunter Pence. And here's Aaron Hill. And Hill waves at a breaking ball, and it's no balls and one strike. Hill was hit on the foot on a 3 0 pitch in his last at bat, his only at bat. And that's outside, one ball and one strike. Take a look at the eyes of Hunter Pence. That ball right in front of him. No need to look at your third base coach. That call is yours. We can scoop. And you really appreciate his speed when you stand next to him. Hill pops it up. That's not going to do it. It's going to be Peterson who comes racing in. And he's going to make the catch. Two outs. And here's Parker. Those are at bats. You just want to take a bite out of your bad head. Yeah, you do. It doesn't matter if it's a spring training game or you're wearing third base in less than two outs. If you think you're an RBI guy, and Aaron Hill is. I mean, he's made a good living, you know, capitalizing on that. I know he was an RBI guy against the Giants. Dave Roberts coming out. Josh Raven going out. And we're going to do pitcher. True stories on this date in 1967. Commissioner William Eckert, Eckert approved the plan to name a Cy Young Award for both the American and the National Leagues. The honor began in 1956, only one pitcher in the Major Leagues earning that award. The 1967 Cy Young Award winners were Jim Lonborg and, of course, this is about the Giants. It was Mike McCormick. Who won that award in 67? And Mike's record 22 and 10 with a 2.85 ERA. And oh, by the way, he could hit too. Yeah, he could. And he also started that year in the bullpen. And he was telling us at times he would throw batting practice in between starts. They all did. Like, I, I mean, come on, are you serious? Four man rotation. They would throw on a Monday. They'd throw be a, they'd throw a group of batting practice on Tuesday. How <laughs> things have changed. John Miller likes to tell the story uh, about. Uh, I can't think of his name now. Billy, what's the guy's name? Billy Pierce, and he was throwing a, a game, and it was the first game of the year, and. Uh, Anyway, I forget what, he, what the score was, but the, it was a lopsided win, so they let Billy Pierce go ahead and play. And he got roughed up in the latter part of the game. And then at the end of the game, they said, why'd you leave him in there? And Alvin Dark, the skipper, said, well, he only throwing 155 Gosh. pitches. I mean, he knew he had a lot left in his arm. Of course. Younginer is the new pitcher. Younginer, a minor league free agent. Signed in November of last year. Came up with the Red Sox organization last year was in Atlanta at the big league level finally got to that level. And we're going to take a look at it for the first time. High drive. Right field. Gone. <laughs> Younginer throws one pitch. And Parker circles the bases. And the Giants take the lead. Wow. 
I do believe Parker was sitting on the first pitch. Yeah, you look at fastball. He's going to get down in the Giants dugout. Somebody's going to say, Did you get all that one? He has to say yes. Challenge, belt high, boom. So here's Beckham. And Beckham takes a strike. Now for a guy trying to win it, a job. That's the type of an at bat that speaks loud. What about his last at bat? Yeah, another one. Nice double down the right field line off the lefty. Bullet. Off of a quality lefty. An 11 year veteran lefty. Beckham drew a walk in the second. And he does hold up, and it's two balls and one strike. Kelby Tomlinson is on deck. And a strike. It's two and two. Jared Parker. Competition with Mac Williamson for that left field job. Beckham on the ground to third, and on the back end is Culberson. And that is going to end the inning. So Jarrett Parker with the second home run of the spring. This one to right field. And it is gone. Bye bye, baby. Giants lead 5-3. Giants behind four RBIs by Jarrett Parker lead the Dodgers 5 3 is tie block goes after Cody Bellinger lefty against lefty and there's a pitch inside for a ball one ball and no strikes on deck is Bobby Wilson and then Charlie Culberson these three hitters are the three Dodgers that scored in the second there's a call strike. The line at third is Aaron Hill. Boy, this kid takes a rip. It's one and two. Yeah, he takes a big rip. He's got legit power. And another guy like Jack Peterson, he does not make much of a two strike adjustment. Down low. Good one two pitch, two and two. Uh, 21 years of age. 
Now, Peterson, to his credit, has, has made some as he's matured at the big league level. Got him. Hey, we got Cody Ross down in the dugout. That's right, the Cody Ross, who helped get us our first World Series ring. In the where is your ring, by the way, Cody? It is at home. <laughs> you ever look at it and go, "Wow, this this was the best." Oh, all the time. But I got to tell you, it's great to hear and uh, talk to you guys again. That's for sure. Well, you know what? There's something about you wearing those colors just brings back some great memories. And uh, there's a bouncing ball up the middle. And it's going to be Beckham who makes the play. Here's game four for Cody Ross against the Atlanta Braves. You know, just one of many home runs in postseason <laughs> for Cody Ross. Madison Bumgarner appreciated that. Uh, well, that one was off Derek Lowe. Yeah, that was a, he was throwing a no hitter at that, that, at that time, I think. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, that was a that was a get it going right there. Here's Bobby Wilson. You, you know, when it all started out for you, you kind of got to the Giants, what, right before the trading deadline? Yes. Didn't look like there was a spot for you to play. All yeah. of a sudden, a spot was created. And then I guess the true definition of coming to a new team is getting a chance, and you did. Yeah, luckily. I mean, I know the outfield was crowded whenever I, you know, got claimed off waivers. And, you know, there was a lot of rumors saying that I was. You know, blocked by the Padres, or was, I was get, trying to get go to the Padres, and the Giants blocked me, and ended up working out. Obviously, there's a drive to right, and Hunter Pence is going to make the catch. We're going to keep Cody Ross here. We got way too many things to talk about with Cody, so he's going to join us in the bottom of the sitting with the Giants leading 5-3. It's 5-3 Giants, and we're visiting with Cody Ross. And uh, this was game one against the Phillies. And uh, against uh, Roy Holiday, just another softballer. And what does Cody do? He gets two, two home runs off of him. And, uh, and I'm not going to say you were even surprised. But Cody, you might have even been surprised. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have very much success against uh, Holiday up to that point. And I think I've told the story a few times, but I've tried everything against him. Tried to hit the ball the other way, tried to hit it up the middle, and I was like, you know what? Forget it. I'm just going to try to hit a home run. And <laughs> <laughs> it worked out well. It worked <laughs> twice. Here's Kelby Tomlinson who takes the pitch high. You know, the one thing, Cody, when we were first hearing rumors that there was a chance that the Giants could get you. We were having a conversation, and we mean myself, Pat Burrell, and, uh, and Aubrey Huff. And I told you this story, but I told Huff and, and Burrell, you know, there's a chance we get Cody Ross. And Burrell at that time said, we get Cody Ross, we'll win this thing. Wow. Yeah, I mean, that's two of my, you know, great buddies. And, you know, we had some great times together in San Francisco. And, you know, once I got over there, I was, you know, it was one of those weird experiences when I walk in the clubhouse. I really didn't know a whole lot of people. And, and as soon as I got there, Pat and Aubrey and, you know, Wilson and all those guys, you know, came up to me and just welcomed me and I, you know, just felt right at home. And, you know, it was a, it was a great, 
great experience to go through and you know at, at the at time at the first it, you know it was well, I didn't I didn't think it was going to work out because you know, like I said it was a lot of outfields crowded outfield and you know one thing led to another and I got in there somehow and Boach you know gave me the opportunity to play in September and worked out you know you just mentioned three guys who and they were part of the wild bunch <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah the misfits is what you know I guess you'd call it but you know a lot of guys that you know other teams didn't want and uh, you know credit to Sage and Bobby Evans and the rest of the scouts that you know brought guys in that they felt were winners and could go out there and uh, you know get the job done and still good players you know just didn't work out on certain teams in game five of the World Series uh, when Edgar Renteria hit the home run were you on first or second I was on I was on third you were on third yeah, that's on right third, and I, I remember the ball coming off of his bat and I jumped in the air as high as I could with my you know hands up and it was uh, probably the most exciting time that I had the entire postseason um, you know including all the home runs that I'd hit and you know, just that feeling of, you know, that, man, we really do have a chance right here to win this whole thing. And we got, you know, Wee's coming in to shut the door. And it was just an incredible feeling at that time. You know, we're, we're sitting in the broadcast booth. We could not tell when Renteria hit the ball whether it had a chance to go out. As a matter of fact, I think we all thought that it probably had a better chance of hitting the wall or maybe bouncing up against the wall. Could you tell? When he hit it, that it had a shot. Yeah, you know, I just could tell. I mean, at third, you could you obviously get a little better sense of you know the way the ball comes off the sound, and right. I mean, the ball travels in Texas, and I feel I, I just knew it was going to be a home run, and you know what a storybook ending, you know, basically for his you know, for his career, and it was uh, you know incredible, incredible feeling for right, all of us. Before we let you go, family's good. Everyone's happy. great. I'm, I'm happy. Glad to be back in orange and black and talking to you guys. That's the, for sure. The hip is fine. Hip's great. You know, whole body feels a lot better now that I'm not playing. Well, let me ask you. Hip is fine to go skiing? <laughs> I, I did ski for the first time oh, this past year. I know. Look I know. at you. <laughs> all right. Well, say hello to your, your beautiful wife and your kids, and uh, and we do miss you. I will. Good talking to you guys. Right, thanks, all right, all right, Thanks. Two strikeouts. Uh, two good curveballs. Yeah. <laughs> and here's Denard Span. Madison Younginger. I, I do have to clean something up. You know, our partner, John Miller, our Hall of Fame broadcast partner, is covering us once again. I said it was Billy Pierce. He, he has, it was Billy O'Dell in 1962 that threw the 150 plus pitch complete game 15 hitter in a game where the Giants led 19 to 3 going into the ninth inning and then they won it 19 to 8. And at the time, Alvin Dark, manager, was asked, why'd you leave him in there? Well, you're only throwing 150 plus pitches. I mean, come on. So, John just texted you that. He did. And it was also the first game he'd ever seen. First big, big game. He was right. 10 years old. You know, that's fine. So, John only texts us when we make a mistake. Well, that was a big mistake. And plus, it was 172 total pitches. <sighs> I'm going to have to talk to John. Bye, three.
Giants Baseball on CSN Bay Area is brought to you by the law offices of Stephen Moskowitz. Aggressive, accessible, experienced tax lawyers. Call Moskowitz LLP at 888-TAX-DEAL. Giants with a 5-3 lead here in the desert. George Contos is taking over. Take a look at last year's effort from George Contos. Solid season. Three and two of the two five three ERA. Second game this spring training. Contos really has completely redefined himself in his career as a giant. First saw him, he was a fastball slider guy, more sliders than fastballs. But now, I mean, he'll he'll put four or five different types of movement on the on the ball. He'll two types of fastball. His slider, of course, which is his best kill pitch. He's got a cutter and a curveball now. Here's Henry Ramos, who tripled off of Kane in the second inning, and he takes a pitch inside. One ball and no strikes. Katos, a four-year veteran. Utley to follow, and that pitch is inside off the glove of Fedorovich. Two balls and no strikes. Great to see those highlights from 2010. You know, and Cody Ross was the MVP of the NLCS when the Giants played the Phillies. They didn't have an MVP in the NLDS, and I don't think they still, I don't think they have it now, but they had they have had it when the Giants played the Braves, he would have won that too. Yeah, probably would have. And that's a four pitch walk. Well, the Giants are proud to invite all students, alumni, and fans throughout the Bay Area to our college nights. Each college night package includes a game ticket and a co branded Giants College t shirt. Featured schools include Stanford, Cal, USF, San Francisco State, St. Mary's, Santa Clara, and San Jose State. For more information, to purchase tickets, visit sfgiants.com slash special events. No Cal Poly, no Southern Illinois University. Yeah, I'm a little ticked off about that. Well, you helped put that school on the map. What are you talking about? <laughs> Me? I didn't go to class. Yeah. John Madden now. Ozzie Smith, they helped put that school on the map. Along with a whole bunch of very successful college graduates. Yeah. But Lee has bounced out twice to Brandon Belt. Randall to follow. Oh yeah. I think they were psyched putting their unis on to cover the game. I think that's a, a, a father and son. Absolutely it is. Santos now with six straight pitches out of the strike zone. The you know, longer it, it takes you to throw a strike, the harder it, it becomes to throw a strike. And throwing strikes has never been a problem for Contos. And I think he's one of those guys that has better command with his slider than he does the fastball. Well, then throw it here. That one pops it up, and that's going to be. Out of play. No wind tonight, and that's a good thing. I mean, really, no wind at all. We had a game a couple of years ago that was called because of wind. That's none wind. Flag blowing straight down. But you never know what you're going to get. I mean, that, they've had nasty weather here the last week. Yeah. It's just now starting to break, and they said the next week through the weekend, anyway, it's going to be gorgeous. Two balls and a strike. And that pitch is wide, three and one. So we've heard from John, right? John Miller, indeed. And we also might got a text from our old radio engineer, Lee Jones, who's watching him. Of course, we bid farewell to Lee 
throughout the season last year. And uh, he gets to now sit on the couch and watch. Good for him. Pet his dog. Have an adult beverage. He's a call straight. He did a lot of games with Lee Jones. Well, he'd be missed, no doubt. Three and two to Udley. He can have an adult beverage now during the game. Could never do that. Or at least that we know of. No. I mean, there have been those that have. And in fact, there have been those that have done it and they became better broadcasters. Three and two. Utley takes high. Cantos with back to back walks. And now you get to the beef. So Federover's coming out trying to calm Cantos down. You know, there's no worse feeling for a pitcher than the feeling that you can't control your pitches. And early on, and in fact, mentioned that this is the second outing that. That Contos has had, you don't know what you're going to get when you're going out there. You don't know what kind of feel you're going to have on your pitches. And what do you think Grandall's thinking? Fastball challenge. Right down the middle. So there's that break. Yeah, and he throws it in any count. I mean, he'll throw that and he feels more comfortable throwing that in three two counts than the fastball. Is wide, one ball and one strike. Giants won the first three games of this Cactus League, and then they've lost the last two. Really means nothing. Fouled out of play. You know, you just don't really want to go three and twenty-eight. It, exactly. I mean, it, it really doesn't mean anything, but. Like Cincinnati, I mean, they started out today. They were 0 5. That's the team that you know they, they're rebuilding. A win means a little more in their camp than it does in other camps around the Valley of the Sun. Even though it doesn't mean anything, it does. Kind of. Remember the year that we won the Cactus League? Yeah. 1985? Yeah. How'd we do during the regular season? Lost 100 games. 2 1 pitch to Grandal. Swing and a miss. 2 2. Actually, got him. So here's Jack Peterson. By the way, put that down at Grandel Scott report. Cannot hit a hanging slider. Here's Peterson. Peterson hit into a double play in the first, struck out in the third. Yasiel Puig is on deck. Dodger fan here. Probably not the only one. Is he with the Giants fan? He is. That's a problem. Not if he's buying the beer. In a relationship like that, who do you think has a better chance of turning the other into? Like, you think she's got a shot at turning him into a Giants fan or the other way around? I, I don't think there's any chance either way. <laughs> I think the verdict is in. <laughs> that is not the answer that I was expecting. I was expecting you to say that she has a better chance. Of turning him. That, that's my call. Well, I, I think that's a good call, but. Driven to right. Pence is looking up. Gone. So two walks and a home run, and the Dodgers take the lead. Uh, he hit that ball out with top spin. 
give you an idea how strong he is. So that's the a hanger. Nah, upon further review, that was some backspin. But boy, did he have a good pitch to do something with. Head stayed down nicely through the swing. And it had the sound. Well, look, he hit it good. Parker hit his good. It's also the right place to hit it here. Puig. That ball either hit the bat or it hit Puig. It hit something. Well, he could hit the bat, but it may have vibrated and pitched his little finger. I mean, with Puig, you got to pitch him in. His power's middle away. He likes mistakes out over the plate, up. Tap to third. Hill's going to have to hurry. And Belt will dig it out. I think Puig's thinking, look, I hit a home run, and the next pitch came a bit up and in. Yeah. It's okay to think that. I think he's used to it. I think everybody pitches him in. So Puig retired. It's now 0 for 3, and here's Kike Hernandez. The other guy sits fastball. And I mean the whole bat. Fouled off of Federovich. Location has been a problem for George Kaltos tonight. But this is such a great time of year because, as we mentioned earlier, it doesn't count. If you're the pitching coach, if you're Dave Getty or the bullpen coach, Mark Gardner, you know, it's easy to analyze this out. He's up. Oh, that may have been the best pitch he's thrown this inning. It impressed Hernandez. I wish you could have a recording of the conversation that Kike Hernandez is having with himself right now after swinging at that pitch. Throw it again. So the home run by Peterson gives the Dodgers the lead. Giants are coming up 6 5 LA. Giants baseball on CSN Bay Area is brought to you by AAA. Get an auto or home quote and get a free tech-friendly cargo bag. Go to AAA.com slash protect or visit a AAA branch for details. Certain restrictions apply. 6-5 Dodgers. And the new pitcher now for the Dodgers is Ralston Cash. There's Cash. We also have another change. It's uh, Chris Taylor goes into play second base. 
Take a look at the numbers last year for cash. Double A, triple A, nine and three with a two eight seventy hour. And look at the strikeouts: eighty four punch outs in sixty nine innings. Big guy, six three, two hundred thirty pounder. At the University of Georgia. First pitch at ninety, one ball and no strikes. That's Chris Taylor. Good boy. And a pop up straight back and out of play. Hunter Pence. And then Brandon Bell. Nunez poked a single into right field in the third inning. And then in attempting to steal second, he kind of tripped and stumbled and was picked off. Here he pops it out of play for one and two. Give me a good flat swing. And the thing about a guy who's flat, you know, normally they're high ball hitters, belt high and above guys, but with Nunez, I mean, he can get flat down around the knees. And that makes him unique. Chopped to Kike Hernandez. One out. Started the rally for the Giants in the third with a one out walk. We mentioned John, who's watching. Dave Fleming is. Home Alone Dad, how about that? I mean, Home Alone without the wife. He's got the three kids. So, I wonder if he changed the rules. And just walked out the door to go on a business trip. What do you think? Absolutely, he changed the rules. I, I think you do. I, I did. That's with a swing and a miss, one and two. I, I, my kids ate more junk food. They stayed up a little later. Couple of our movies, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't slip that by. She would know. And Pence strikes out. Anyway, hello to Dave Fleming and the kids. Well, reminder: check out the April special events calendar. Marvel Superheroes Day, April 24th, features a Giants themed Guardians of the Galaxy bobblehead giveaway. And take home a Giants Warriors reversible beanie on Bay Area Unite Night, April 26th. Go to sfgiants.com slash special events to see the entire schedule and to get your tickets. Here's Belt. Belt is one for two. And he takes down low. With an opposite field single in the third inning, he was on base when Parker hit the home run. Serious fans. Oh, yeah. Got their game face on. It was like a big family reunion here before the game as all the fans were coming in. It really is one of the great things about spring training. Just a relaxed, laid back attitude. And I, th I think Giants fans. They come here from Northern California and they intentionally will forget to pack a sweatshirt or a hat or a t-shirt so they can buy a new one. We've done it all these years traveling. See that's I don't know if that's new or not. And by the way it isn't that cold. Witness protection. You know what you're right. Belt takes a strike three and two. Good slider three one. Well, I left Reno this morning to fly down here. It was 23 degrees. Yeah. So getting off the plane in the Valley of Sun and get a little sun baked on your back, it felt pretty good. On the ground, foul. Well, now for 
how long you're here for the extended time. You don't have to worry about I-80 being closed, Highway 50 being closed. Yeah. Yeah, dude, you can relax. Mount Rose Highway. And Belt takes the walk. Cash did not want to give in to that fastball. So here's Hill. Well, it was pretty cool flying right down the, high, the the Sierra line and see all the snow that's up there. Say the snowpack is 185 percent of, of normal, and I'm saying it. I'm going out on a limb right now. I'm saying it because we haven't heard it. Drought's over. You heard it here first. I don't know why nobody says it. <laughs> We're so cautious. An epic historical winter. Hill is 0 for 1 as he pops this one up. And this is going to be a long run for Puig, but Puig likes these challenges and he's going to come up short. He can cover some ground. Yes, he can. Now, Puig from Cuba says he's a better soccer player than he is a baseball player. If he was raised in the States, he'd be a linebacker for yeah, Minnesota he'd Vikings. Probably put on about 30 more pounds on that frame, and that's exactly what he'd be. He is a physical specimen. Up and into Hill, one and two. Jarrett Parker's on deck. It takes high, two and two. Giants will spend seven weeks here in the desert. And then who do they open up against for the regular season? Diamondbacks. For four. And where do they play those? With games? an off day. Here. Here. So five days right back in Arizona to start the season. But that's like two years away from now. <laughs> and we, we haven't reached the dog days of spring yet. Belt goes. He'll take strike three call. No runs, a walk, one left through five, six, five, Dodgers. Hey, join us for our next spring training telecast. That's going to take on the Rockies. That's Friday, St. Patrick's Day, March 17th, the 6 p.m. start. You'll see it on NBC Bay Area. Then March 19th against the Brewers. It'll be right here on CSN. 
March 23rd against the Mariners, a 6 o'clock game on CSN. Then the Padres again on NBC Bay Area. And then it's back home in the three-game Bay Bridge series. And the March 30th game against the A's on CSN. The March 31st game on NBC Bay Area, both 7 o'clock games. And then the 12 o'clock finale on April 1st. You'll see that on CSN. The Giants will hop on a plane and head right back down to Arizona to start the season. That April 1st game, it'll be Glenn and Ray. Roberto Gomez is the new pitcher. Facing Cody Bellinger and Paul Stern. Gomez did not play the last two years. Injury has kept him out of the game, so this is a big spring for him. Came up with the Tampa Bay Rays. So, a big outing for Roberto Gomez. Brandon Belt on. In the Giants dugout probably towards the end of the dugout and his night is over and you get to cheer and watch the rest of the way. How, how's that go for you? Yeah pretty much. Uh, you sit here and Are you pretty good with the pom poms. Yeah. Yeah I'm not bad. I did a little bit in high school so uh, I know what I'm I know what I'm doing out here. Little bit. One and two to Cody Bellinger. Here's one to Michael Morris. And he'll make the play. Look you got a toddler at home are you. Are you getting sleep? Yeah, actually, he does a real good job sleeping. Um, I think my wife has, has the hard part with that because, uh, you know, I, I get up, I leave early in the morning for spring training. She's got to sit there and deal with him all day. So uh, my job is when I come home uh, after after a game or after practice, uh, you know, it's my turn to be dad and, and hang out with him. So is he a good sleeper like his dad? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he definitely got to sleeping from me. Uh, you know, there, there, there's definitely times where... <laughs> There's definitely times when he didn't want to sleep, but he figured out real quick that in the belt household, you got to sleep all the way through the night. <laughs> so is Grayson going to be tall like his old man? You know, he's getting pretty big right now. Uh, I say at first we didn't, we weren't, we weren't sure. Uh, it looked like he was going to be uh, shorter like his mom, but right now he's hit a gr growth spurt and he's looking pretty good. All right, so another spring for you, another spring in the big leagues. This one any different than the others? Um, you know. Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, I would say early on, you know, in my career, I wanted to come out here and make sure that I was 100% ready to go, um, you know, in all facets of my game from, from game game one of spring training from day one, actually. So right now, my, my goal is more just to get ready for for the season. So, uh, you know, while I don't feel, you know, I want to go out there and, and do the best I can to compete at, at all times, uh, my main goal is to make sure I'm ready for, you know, April. How many at-bats you think it, it takes in spring? Uh, probably a couple weeks. So however many bats that is, I would say maybe 40, 50. That's about right. It's two and one to Bobby Wilson. We're visiting with Brandon Bell. I feel like I can hear myself breathing a lot in here. No, no. I think I had to run first or third, third one time. I'm out of breath. Yeah, so no, we, we can't hear you breathing. Hard. <laughs> okay, good. Do you ever miss pitching? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> you know, Jeez. I think I, I would rather be a position player and, and play every day, but. Uh, um, pitching is a lot of fun. Uh, you feel like you're in control of the game, and it's just a, it's just a battle um, constantly between uh, pitcher and batter. So that's a lot of fun. And uh, there's a strikeout. That could break a ball from Gomez. All right, what kind of pitcher would you be? Would you be a starter? Would you be a reliever? Would you be a side armor like uh, Javier Lopez? Give us a scout report. I feel like I'd be a starter. Um, you know, I had three three pretty good pitches, and you know, since I've been in the big leagues, throwing some sides with Crawford, I've developed a fourth. You know, I throw that. I feel like I can throw a cutter pretty good, and I can make it sink at times. So, uh, for the most part, I think with with four pitches, I could be a starter. Well, I mean, you pitched a little in college, right? I did. I, I wasn't starting in, in college, or at least when I got to the University of Texas. But I did pitch a little bit, and uh, you know, I do get the itch from every, every now and again. I try to get in front of Bochi if uh, there's a big lead out there. Yeah. But um, you know, it hadn't, it hadn't happened yet. But right. I think it will one day. I have faith. Well, you like throwing the ball to second on ground balls. I do. It's a lot of fun. I, I think my favorites are the pickoffs. 
Um, if we have somebody picked off, I can I can really let it go down to second base, and that's my favorite. I would like to maybe mix in a slider or, or a cutter or something every now and then to Crawford, but hadn't done it yet. Uh, don't feel comfortable with that, but we'll, we'll try it one day. <laughs> you well, mean we, throwing a cutter we, from first to second? Absolutely. I want to keep him on his toes out there. He's got to be ready for anything. I mean, we watch you guys before the game. You have your own ritual. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he knows what my what my pitches do, so he should be ready for it. Um, you know, sometimes it gets too easy for him out there. I just want to make it a little bit harder and see what he can do. Well, you got to drop down then. You got to go from the side. Oh, I will. I'll, <laughs> I'll drop down. I'll go over the top. I'll do everything I got to do. Um, hopefully, he catches it. But I don't know. We'll see. You know, like I said, you got to make it a challenge for him over there. Two and one to Charlie Culberson, and this should end the inning. And Brandon Belt, thanks for stopping by. Quite entertaining as always. All right, thanks, guys. You got it. Nice inning for Roberto Gomez. Dodgers lead. Giants baseball on CSN Bay Area is brought to you by Toyota, the full line automaker with the longest lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. Six five Dodgers here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Patrick Schuster is the new pitcher. He's a left hander. Schuster, Dodgers signed him as a free agent last November. Lefty been with the A's and the Phillies last year got to the big leagues with the A's then he got to the big leagues with the Phillies Schuster 26 years old 6'2 201 pound side armor well, high side armor this was the home run by Parker in the third inning as he will lead things on and no doubter Jumping on the first pitch fastball. So here's Parker who takes a call strike. We do have multiple changes. The all one pitch coming up to Jarrett Parker. Back, he had a good rip. So we'll get those changes for you. Yeah, this is the type of the time of the game that broadcasters have these long periods of they're not they're not talking. They, they just silence. That's because we're trying to figure out the names of the guys they just brought in. Pop fouling out of play. Well, I got a solution. Who's at first? What's at second? I don't care is at short, and I don't know is at third. Yeah, Les Johnson's in left field. Why is in left? Because is in center. Nobody is in right. Tomorrow is pitching, and today is doing the catching. <laughs> it one never of, gets one old. of the greatest all, 
all time skip. There he gets old. Parker drives it into left center field. On the move is Verdugo, and he's going to track it down in left center field. One out. And left field is Iber. Zegadin's at third. Murphy is doing the catching. And as you just saw, Alex Verdugo made the running catch in center field. Beckham takes a ball, one ball and no strikes. All right, I'm caught up. I got him now. Down low, two balls and no strikes. Parker probably felt like maybe he got that one a little bit towards the end of the bat. Still going the opposite gap, taking it out to the warning track. That's pretty good at bat. He's got to be pretty happy the way he's seeing the ball. I don't think so. Foul down the right field line and out of play. So, I mean, you've been in this situation. You've battled for positions with guys. If you're battling for a position like Mac Williamson and Jared Parker are, play left field. If you're Mac Williamson, you watch a guy hit a double and a home run and then have another good at bat. He's hit the ball hard three times. What do you think of well, you know, the one thing it's really hard to do, but you have to avoid it, and that's cheer against the guy. It's just not good karma. No. Uh, so you kind of have to take care of your own business. Uh, if Parker's lighting things up, if you're Williamson, you can't really put a lot of pressure on yourself because you're going to get some at bats, and you need to show the manager and the coaching staff that. You deserve some at bats. But I found it very distracting to pull against your teammates. In the minor leagues, different story. Well, that's yeah, the difference between the minor leagues and the big leagues. Big leagues, everybody's cheering for everybody. Minor leagues, I mean, you know, you don't want your teammates to do bad. You just want them to not do as good as you. So you could get to the big leagues. Yeah, how, how, you're in A ball. How's that second baseman doing in double A? Really? Absolutely, you're thinking that way. Here's the payoff pitch to Beckham. And he takes the walk. Giant Spring Training Baseball is always live with the MLB.com at bat mobile app. Stay connected all spring. Radio broadcast, video highlights, stats, news, and more. You can download the MLB.com at bat today. It is the number one app for live baseball. And there is no denying that fact. Here's Kelby Tomlinson. Outside to Tomlinson, one ball and no strikes. We're in the bottom of the sixth. Tomlinson is bounced out, and that knocked in a run. And then he struck out looking in the fourth. Jack Murphy, the catcher, going to come out and have a word with Patrick Schuster. I'm looking at Murphy's hair, and when I got to the big leagues, the A's had a catcher by the name of Dave Duncan, and that's how his hair looked. Well, there were a lot of guys that had long hair back then, I and mean, that was the deal. And that is going to be. A double play. Maybe not so much at first. We're not going to go to replay. Six five Dodgers.
summary. Well, there's a couple of three run home runs in this game, and that's the difference. Casimir started, Kane started, blocked through well. Parker, a three run home run. He's got four RBIs. Jack Peterson, a three run home run. And that's where we stand, 6 5, as we start out the seventh inning with Stephen Oakert, the new pitcher for the Giants. And Brett Ebner is the hitter. But you knew that. Well, yeah, now. <laughs> Okert got the big leagues last year, really impressed a lot of people. Big guy, 6'3, 210. That was his numbers last year. 14 strikeouts in 14 innings, just nine base runners, five knocks, four walks. And he's got a fastball that goes in the high 80s, low 90s, more low 90s than high 80s. A curveball slider combination. Really great numbers against some lefties, especially coming up to the minor leagues. And a call swing. By the way, if you're thinking, yeah, there's a new catcher in there, it is Aramis Garcia doing the catching. Ebert at the plate. Orlando Caliste is now at shortstop. Let me tell you something. There are three or four coaches talking about Caliste. He can play. Anywhere. Yeah, Bobby Evans is talking about him today in a conversation we had. And again, the thing that impresses everybody is the athleticism. He could play anywhere. I tell you, if you're a player and you can play shortstop at second base and do it well, you are a commodity. There's a double play that ended the inning. You said. There was no replay, and uh, there very well could have been because Tomlinson beat it up. Well, it scares me to think that someday they might have a replay in spring training. Line drive to right off the bat of Chris Taylor, and this one squirts by Austin Slater. And they're going to hold on. Now they're going to have some base runners all over the place. And now Garcia realizes that he's going to throw it a second and they got him. And that. That's I think a, a gaffe by the third base coach. Hey it's spring training for th third and first base coaches too. So Chris Woodward the third base coach. You always feel like you get singled out if you're a base coach and, and you have a miscommunication. It's a tough read, but a nice play from Slater once he boxed the play. Hit the cutoff man, a good throw. And the Giants wind up getting a tag at second base, so they'll take it. Sets up a strikeout situation here for Oker. And that's going to get away from Garcia. And coming in to score is either. So we'll replay and watch as Taylor, I mean, he commits. He looks over and, and he sees the runner in front of him going. That's his call to go. Now all of a sudden, the guy in third baseline backs up and goes to third. Well, guess what? Rock at a hard place. Stetson Alley is the hitter, or Alley Stetson. <laughs> it's Stetson Alley. And that's chopped foul. Stetson Alley originally came up with the Pirates. Yeah, minor league free agent. Dodgers picked him up. 
He's a guy that can play a number of positions. Plus, well, he's got some pop. He was in Altoona the last three years. And out swinging is Stetson Ellie. And there's two outs. Altoona. Well, what's the mascot for Altoona? It's got to be the Tunas, right? I would think. Here's Segadin. Yeah. So Dan Peterson in the truck said it is the Altoona curve. That's a wasted opportunity. And a cold strike. Not that the curve is not a cool name, mind you, but the Altoona Tunas would have been better. Here's the one two and it's lying foul. Guess when he making a play? Give you a high five. Albert Pujols fan, very friendly. And a strike got to end the inning. All right. A run in seven five Dodgers. All right, thank you very much, Dave. You're very kind. Yes. Uh, let's all keep our fingers crossed on Kevin Durant. Yeah, that could have been worse. So MCL, but grade two strain. So he'll be ready for the playoffs. Here's Aramis Garcia. He's going to hit first. Seth Spitzbarth is on the mound. And Garcia takes a cold strike. This old man, Spitzbar's kid. Yep. It's Shea Spitzbar. Well, I, I can only tell you he's pumped up. I look at Bob's handwriting, it's like a prescription from a doctor. It's easier to read a cave. 
two balls and one strike. Ruggiano is on deck and it's two and two. Sneaky fast. You, know, you see velocity on guys' fastball. You see a 90 mile an hour fastball that goes right down the middle. Guy swings through it and he's late. He's going, well, why is that? Backs it up. Absolutely. And arm action and angle has everything to do. The deception has everything to do with how you see it as a hitter. Other guys go out there and are throwing 99 miles an hour, and guys are barreling them all over the place. I mean, this is just straight, good location, 88 mile an hour, and this is the second one he swings through. Here's Ruggiano, and Ruggiano fouls it off the backstop. Guy swings through two fastballs at 88. If you're pitching, you're thinking you've got a magic pitch. Staten Island. Malloy College. Ruggiano takes a ball on the appeal, no swing. If I'm a first base coach, he go. He go. Spring training, I'm practicing my strike call. Ryder Jones is on deck, and there's a pitch high to Ruggiano. Another guy that has done some damage against the Giants. Takes a rip, two and two. <laughs> is, it, is it just coincidental? Guys that have great numbers against the Giants end up being with the Giants? Well, I mean, <laughs> I've definitely impressed the Giants. Two two pitch, here it is. Got him. That's good breakable. That is straight down. Two hitters, two strikeouts, one swinging, one looking. It is right over the top, straight down, fall off the table, drop. And when you're Ruggiano and you've never seen this guy, you don't even know he's got that pitch. And it winds up being a big league hang with him. Hunter Jones getting a first look at that curveball. Line and out of play. Ryder Jones. We saw him last year for the first time. We like to swing. Last year in Richmond hit 247 with 15 home runs. 0 2 pitch in the dirt. He's got a good name. Ryder Jones, 6'3, 215 pounder. Out of Boone, North Carolina. Jones was a second round pick by the Giants in 2013. And last year, double A. Oh, wow. He's definitely a guy they, they like. Yeah, they do. Two pitch coming up to Ryder Jones. Down low, three and two. You know, when you sign a kid out of high school, you really have to be patient for the simple reason you have to allow him to, to grow, to get to the to the big league level of strength it takes to play every day. And a three-two breaking ball. Good at bat. So here's Slater. Bring that kid into your system. Teach him how to work. Put him on an off-season program. Strengthen him up. A program designed for his position. And he takes a call strike. He's one for seven this spring. You see his combined numbers, double A AA and triple A, and he ended up hitting over 300. Eighth round pick by the Giants in 2014. Lifetime 305 hitter in the minor leagues. I mean, those are credentials. Put together three seasons. The other thing, too, about Slater is he never has stayed in one town the whole year. You start off in a city and they move him up. 
And he has hit every level. Rookie league, both A ball teams, Salem, Kaiser, San Jose, Richmond, last year Sacramento, and he's raked everywhere he's gone. Driven to right. And it's over the head of Puig. And here comes Ryder Jones. And he is going to be held up at third. So Slater with a double, second and third, two outs. Play stops the field at that. Take a look at the location. Spitzbarth goes right in on the hand. So the guy be able to dig out the inside location at the hands. Let's see a guy who's got some height on him. It's Slater 6-2. That's an impressive at bat. Here's the World Series hero. Michael Morris. And a breaking ball for a call strike. So right off the bat, a breaking ball. Morris is two for five this spring with the home run. Chops this one to short. And that's going to end the inning. Giants strand a pair. We'll head to the eighth inning. It remains 7 5. Dodgers. Features an opening day, Dodgers, Indians, and Cub ticket, all for one low price. So don't miss opening day. Go to sfgiants.com slash minipack for more pack information or to purchase. Oh, yeah. They got the right attitude. Now, they spent some time, and that's not the first time they've worn them. Here's Puig facing David Hernandez. Caracuto, by the way, is at second base. We did not get him into the game in the last inning. See the numbers for David Hernandez last year with Philly. A good solid season, 80 strikeouts in 72 and two thirds. I was excited when the Giants brought David Hernandez into the fold. One pitch driven to right, and it's past Slater. So Quig's going to come up. With his first hit, and it's going to be a leadoff double. So here's Kike Hernandez. Hernandez and Puig are the only Dodgers that have played the whole game. Hernandez has bounced out twice. And then Kanto struck him out looking to end the fifth. David 
Hernandez throws hard. You see a lot of mid 90s fastballs. Hernandez, 31 years old. From Sacramento, lives in Elk Grove now. And a strike. Dixon's on deck. Hernandez originally came up with Baltimore, got to the big leagues. But we really got to know when he was with the Diamondbacks. Yep, that's true. Seemed like he pitched every game against the Giants. And pitched well. Had Tommy John surgery in 2015. She is going to go out and say, uh, exactly sure that maybe we have the signs right. Guy on second. We'll see. Had the surgery in 2014, I beg your pardon. But I think he's excited to be in the Giants organization, having grown up in Sacramento. Two balls and a strike. Seven five. Dodgers here in the top of the eighth inning. A couple of mistakes in this game. Two three run home runs. One by each team, and that's low three and one. And this becomes a big pitch. And one thing we know about Kiki Hernandez is he sits fastball, especially at the count. Guarantee that he will try and do something magical here with the three-one count leverage. And he does not get cheated on a swing either. Hit out to Ruggiano in center field. Puig is going to tag. Ruggiano's throw is just a little late and a productive out for Kike Hernandez. See, I, I think those are big pitches. When you know you're coming to a new team, you want to impress. You get behind the count 2-0, 3-1, and you win a fastball challenge. And in that particular, as such a good fastball hitter, looking fastball, you get a fastball to run up off the sweet spot up the bat. Man, that's a good pitch. And those are things that uh, pitching coaches remember. So here's Dixon batting for the first time. Runner at third infield in and a big curveball is down low one ball and no strikes. That's a good break of ball right there but it's not a good break of ball in the first pitch first pitch break of ball you want to bite off some more strikes and get the strike. I mean that's a great break of ball right there if you've got a one or an O2 count one two count tap to third Arroyo bluff. And now they got Puig in a rundown, and Hernandez is going to tag him out. On the play, moving down to second is Dixon. So Arroyo, watch this little hesitation right there, and that really was to freeze Puig. Well, Puig going on contact. Yeah, it's not a great play if you're at third base and you've got that third baseman playing in. Now you see that ball come to the third baseman. You know, that's I think the, the positioning of the third baseman determines whether or not you're going to go on contact. Unless, of course, it all gets overrided if your third base coach says you're going on contact. Here's Verdugo and a strike. Dixon at second. On the ground right at Arroyo at third. And the youngster will throw him out. So let's come back for David Hernandez. Now the Giants coming up from the trail by two.
seven five Dodgers here in the bottom of the eighth inning is Kyle Hooper is the new pitcher. Yeah they get a few things to work out. Yes they do. Uh, Darnell Sweeney is now at second moving from second to short is Chris Taylor. So Kyle Hooper the new pitcher our first chance to look at him he warmed up showed us four pitches fastball curveball slider changeup. Tyler Holt replaces Puig so he's in right. So if you're keeping score at home. Why. <laughs> Christian Arroyo is going to lead things off. He again is having a very nice spring. And the first pitch is a one hopper. Arroyo is three for four with two RBIs. Four at bats. Uh, is that a nice spring? That's a good start. Uh, he's always done well in spring. 17 for 30 at the big league camp. Pops this one up. Second in. We'll watch this one drift out of play. Arroyo thought that that was going to be an OUT. A little bit of the Gumby shoulders, but he gets another look at another pitch. That's an out in Oakland. Arroyo, 21 years of age. He'll turn 30 May 30th, or turn 22 May 30th, I beg your pardon. Lifetime 294 in the minor leagues last year in Richmond, which is really a pitcher's league, hit 274. Pulled on the ground, foul. A run of all dude down there. There he is. Come on. Hey, babe. Oh, oh, hey, oh. hey Stamp, I got money on you. Come on. Out of it. Yeah. I mean, he just looks a little overdressed for Arizona. Yeah, he's doing fine. Yeah. Two balls, two strikes. This are ball dudes. Hey, right now they're getting in shape. <laughs> On the ground to third, giving ground is Sagadin. Good strong throw. I'll bite. How do you do that if you're a ball dude? Is well, let's see. Couch time? Yeah, it's the eighth inning. They're on about their fifth can right now. Uh, here's Minton Bernard. Hey, how many? <laughs> How many times have the, have the ball dudes bailed us out? You know, a nine nothing blowout. And ball dudes do something miraculous. It's almost as if it's staged at, at times. They do not lack for attitude. Here's Bernard, and he takes a strike. I mean, we run into ball dudes on the street at the ballpark, and that's how they introduce themselves. I'm ball dude. <laughs> one ball and one strike. Bernard's another guy who's intriguing. He's been in the minor leagues for five years. 26 years of age. Most of his career spent in the Padre organization, but a lifetime 296 hitter. Out of play is that's going to slice foul. It's one and two. I was kind of hoping to see that thing stay fair because this guy can motor 125 stolen bases in the minor leagues. A couple years, 2014 had 45 stolen bases, followed up the next year with 43 stolen bases. Southern California kid? Yeah. Out of San Diego? Two and two. Orlando Caliste is on deck. Bottom of the seventh. And the two two pitch is another pitch in the dirt. Three and two. 
Stranger but, sights a little bit. You know, this is one of those games where it's, it's pretty typical first week of spring training action where you see the regulars for the first three, four, five innings, and then all of a sudden you start to get an overview of your minor league system. And it really gives you an idea of what is down Five. in the Giants minor league system. See pitchers, see hitters, and you also see where they need to work on a few things. Is their swing a little long? Well, gone are the days where there's 35 guys in camp. Those yeah. are, they're long gone. Well, it, it has to be that way. I mean, they're playing 38 games now. Plus a lot of split games where you got split squad games where you have two games in a, on each weekend days. It's Holt who comes up a little short. That was almost what the doctor ordered. A chance to watch Bernard run. But I, I mean, it's not unusual literally to see 60 guys throughout spring training. Yeah, what did, what did, was the number? Was it 72, I think, in this game? Yeah. And they're all going to get a chance to work. I mean, especially now, look, I know it's not a big deal, but Buster Posey and Brandon Crawford are going to leave for the WBC Monday. So, uh, more at-bats for some people. Out of play. I was talking to Brandon Crawford about it today. He's excited about it. Two gold glovers. Yeah. It's a good pass. Jim Leland going to be the manager of the USA WBC team. I wish him well. I think he's having fun. Yes, I do. Back in uniform. Somebody asked him about Buster Posey. See what he said. Yeah, the last time I saw Buster Posey, he was celebrating. That's true. 2012. Jim Leland, the skipper of the Detroit Tigers. At least he takes a call strike as he bluffs a bunt. I don't think he meant that in a bad way. Well, it does cross your mind when you see a player that was on the team to beat you for the world championship. Did he? He left after that year. It did. That was it. His career was done. I just think the everyday grind you know, kind of wears you down. But, I mean, this is right up his alley, the WBC. Get all of his coaches back. Get the band back together. And I think they're having the time of their life. We wish him well. We, we wish all of the participants well. We wish a healthy WBC. Some of these teams are loaded. Oh and two. Bernard with his lead. In the dirt. And now Bernard easily watched that ball go in the dirt. I think that's the one thing about a good base runner with instincts. You watch the path of the ball. You think that ball is going to be in the dirt. You know, you take your secondary lead with the idea that if that ball goes in the dirt, you're gone. With a guy like Bernard who has great speed, an easy take at 90 feet. Cooper has thrown a lot of pitches and a lot of pitches in the dirt. He's got a lot of breaking balls tonight from everybody. A lot of fastball challenges. I mean, right now is the time when you're supposed to be ahead of the hitters with the fastball. Times have changed. Has not been the theme tonight. And that is a pitch in the dirt. And police say strike or swings at it and misses. 
two down. So here's Kerry Kuto. Yuto at the plate with Bernard at second base. Two outs here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Kyle Hooper. That's ball high. One ball and no strikes. Caracuto from Venezuela. Not a big guy. 5'9, 155 pounder. Came up through the Rays system, Blue Jays system. No, oh, pretty much all Rays. It was Dad played the Blue Jays system. There's a strike. There's a guy, Mike, and it's not now unusual, but Kyle, Kyle Hooper, in the minor leagues. 109 games, one start. So you develop relievers now in the minor leagues. This is flipped to left, and it's going to be a base hit, and Bernard's going to score easily, and it's a 7 6 game. at bat two out knock opposite way driving a run and a breaking ball not a hanger either down out by the knees outside corner let that ball get deep to him and just sort of served it in the left think of beauty that does that it makes it look so easy you think well he's not that tough here's Aramis Garcia Have changed. We talked about Hooper in 109 games in his career in the minor leagues. One start. Back in the day when you and I played, if you were a reliever, I think you couldn't cut it as a starter. Was yeah. It? Well, I mean, starters, they had three pitches. It, 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 a lot of guys who got in the bullpen but could only do two things with the ball. Kind of put you in the pin. One ball and one strike. But that is so dramatically changed now. Now we see guys out of the bullpen that, you know, like Santiago Casilla. I mean, he can do five things, six things with the ball. It seems like everybody's got a change up or a split or a cutter. It wasn't the case back a few generations ago. Big swing and a miss by Garcia. One and two. Garcia struck out. And his only other at bat that came in the seventh inning against Spitzbarth. Ruggiano on deck. We're in the bottom of the eighth. That foul. We'll see another pitch. I think Spitzbarth would be one of those names that we would never say at Candlestick when it was below 50 degrees. Absolutely. For fear of getting fired. He's going to have that fear anyway. Remember Rimlinger? We could we, we X that one out. Slusarski. X that one out. Runner goes. Swing and a miss. Inning over. Giants get it to a one run deficit. We will go to the ninth. It's 7 6 Dodgers.
Well, check out Toyota Sportsnet Central after postgame live right here on CSN Bay Area. And uh, tonight, it'll be all around, all about the Kevin Durant injury and the reaction. The best quarterback for the 49ers in the upcoming draft and the Sharks deadline deal coming up after the game. 7-6 in favor of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Neil Ramirez is the new pitcher. Ramirez last year. The Cubs, the Brewers, the Twins, 18 games, 24 strikeouts in 24 innings. Say he's a hard thrower. We'll get a chance to look at him for the first time. 18 walks in 24 innings. That's the area that he looks to improve upon. So here's Jack Murphy. Jack Murphy? Didn't they name a stadium after him? They did. Yeah. Which you played in, managed in that stadium. You got a win in that stadium. I had a couple of hits in that stadium. You know what? When well, they changed the name to Qualcomm, I, 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 I just, I, I just, I, I, it wasn't right. Giants, didn't they clinch a playoff in that stadium? They did, 1987. Bonds hit a home run off the scoreboard in that stadium? Yes, he did. 49ers win a Super Bowl in that stadium? Yes, they did. And we still know it as the Murph. So Jack Murphy out of Princeton. We could spit on in that stadium, going after home run ball? <laughs> Warm it up before a game? Absolutely. Have a beer dumped on you? You better believe it. He said, I hoped it was beer. A one ball and one strike to Jack Murphy. Foul out of play as he takes a healthy rip. I always thought that was a good place to play. I, you know what? I liked the Murph. I really did. It was never too hot. It was never too cold. It was just right. Will Clark and Tony Gwynn battling it out for a batting championship. One and two. The chicken. San Diego chicken. Not low two and two. Is that what Donnie Robinson had the home run in contest with Ernest Rouse? Yep. Well, that's an event. And that was an event for everybody at the clubhouse. How many times you see the whole team gathered around the bat cage? A pitcher and an infielder and a home run hitting contest. Uh, I wouldn't take on Donnie Robinson. 2 2 pitch. And he got it. See ya. Thanks for stopping by. Ramirez, 27 years old. As you mentioned last year, with three big league teams, he's got a little over two years at the big league level. Here's Eibner. Talking to himself, rubbing up the baseball. Got the leather underneath the right wing. One out here in the ninth. Breaking ball down low. You'll be doing games this weekend, correct, with John Miller on uh, our K flagship station, KMBR. KMBR, John Miller, the big kahuna, can't wait. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. John handled some duties this weekend with Jeremy Affelt, Sean Estes, Erwin Higueros did a game with John, and I thought they all sounded terrific. One thing about doing a spring training game with John Miller if the game goes long you're going to learn something I mean he's going to bring back stories about baseball's history that, that you've never heard of always fun and you can lead John down a path you can <laughs> I mean just uh, look you can say Carl Yastrzemski you know what it's like Flipping through index cards. He's got stories. Uh, it really it doesn't matter what you throw at him. He's got something. He's got something. 2-1 pitch. 
Popped up. Slater is going to run out of room. It's foul. It's two and two. You know, it doesn't happen very often when we'll be on the road, Dave Fleming and John and you and I, and we'll get an off day, which allows us to have a dinner together, and the four of us will all go out to dinner. And usually, if, if I'm out to dinner and it's a two hour meal, I, I, you know, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm over the chair I'm sitting in. But when John's there and the four of us are telling stories, a three and a half hour meal goes like it's 15 minutes. It is the most fun. And, uh, <laughs> and of the four of us, John doesn't drink. Oh, he'll get a glass of wine, but it'll sit there. It's a table prop. On the ground, foul. And like all of us who speak at dinners and luncheons, having the audience drink a little bit is a good thing. Yeah. So John's quite happy if we're a <laughs> good audience. <laughs> Two balls, two strikes. Hello. Three and two. Taylor is on deck. Chris Taylor. And that represents the top of the order. It's seven six Dodgers here in the night. Lots of changes, lots of pitchers tonight. And it is the true definition of spring training. Is Luis has got it. Two outs. And here's Taylor. Ramirez did not like that baseball, so he flips it out. Yeah. See you later. He's a big guy, 6'4, 215. Breaking ball for a call strike. That's good curveball right there. If you're Chris Taylor, you're thinking, thank you for not showing me that for the first time with a two strike count. Could I, I would have swung it at the same way I just swung at that last one. Nun swing. Is that your worst nightmare in spring training when you're facing some kid out of eight ball that you didn't know? For me, especially if he was left handed and threw hard. One ball and one strike. One and two. Quick breaking balls. Ramirez did not come over here thinking he was going to get a triple A job. With two and a half years of big league experience, he's thinking, I'm going to win a big league job. Still breaking balls like this consistently, you're going to open some eyes. Look at two and two. Two hundred and seventy nine here tonight. Dodgers Giants, middle of the week, six o'clock start. Very nice crowd. Got him out of the inning, so Ramirez does a nice job. So we'll go to the ninth. Giants need a run to tie and two to go home.
Dodgers seven Giants six Michael Johnson is the new pitcher and he is a left hander that came up through the Giants or through the Dodgers organization a 14th round pick in 2013 and you talked about Kyle Hooper a guy who's never been much of a starter he has one start in his career there. Michael Johnson's got two in 162 appearances. Somebody must have been sick. <laughs> well, but significant because he's out of Dartmouth. So you got a guy from Dartmouth on the mound throwing to a guy from Princeton behind the plate. A couple of Ivy Leaguers. Jared Parker's got four RBIs in this game. Here's how he picked up three. Now a first pitch challenge back in the third inning. Couple on. And I mean that ball disappeared into the night. So here's Ruggiano facing the lefty. And the first pitch a little flinch by Jim Reynolds and he calls it a ball. One ball and no strikes. Think about Johnson. In 217 innings lifetime in the minor leagues and you're talking four seasons 260 strikeouts in those 217 innings. And that's a strike to even the count. So Johnson steps off. And another strike, one and two. If Ruggiano makes this roster. It's going to be because he can hit left handers. And he does have a track record. So down low, two and two. Miguel Gomez is on deck. Sharply, but Sweeney has it. One out. So here's Gomez hitting for Ryder Jones. Miguel Gomez with one out and nobody on. And the first pitch from Michael Johnson is down low. We showed you the home run, the three run home run by Jarrett Parker. As this is bounced to third, and Sagadin is going to make the throw. Two outs. It was Jock Peterson who hit a three run home run off of George Contos. Giants had the lead, and then that home run gave the Dodgers the lead. And now the last hope for the Giants is Austin Slater. And Slater takes a strike. Should Slater reach, Michael Morris would get in at bat. And I do believe he would like that against the lefty. Well, I, you know, Slater, this is an opportunity to impress one of those at bats where down a run, two outs, get on, set it up. I mean, if you're a young player and you want to impress a manager or a coach, I mean, this is how you do it. You know, he's talking about the 27th out's the hardest one. I mean, that's true even in spring training. Two and two.
2 2 pitch. Got him, and that's the ball game. So the Dodgers come into Scottsdale tonight. They score seven runs. And uh, all in all, a fun evening. And uh, it's good to be back. Well, indeed it is. And uh, the story of the night really are two guys. Uh, Jarrett Parker, a four RBI night, a monster three run home run. He's competing for the job in left field. And Ty Block was really outstanding. He was the big story on the mound tonight. So the Giants now even up their record. They're three and three during the spring. And uh, lots of spring training left. And uh, lots of games left on the TV as well. Final score. Dodgers 7, Giants 6. Stay tuned for Sports Essentials coming up next.